Day Lives, where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today has been on the show before. Her name is Dr. Stephanie Peacock, and she is going to be talking about how you can support your detox of your body naturally with lifestyle and nutrition. So please welcome her back to the show. Hi, Dr. Peacock. What have you been up to? Hey, hey Chef AJ. I'm I'm doing great. Thanks for having me again. And I've just been living in sunny Southern California. I know now you're in Northern California. So it's cold, <laughs> cold, cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, I'm really excited to chat today. So it's a PowerPoint presentation. So is it okay? Uh, I can share my screen. It's all good. Absolutely. Oh. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get started then. All right, so let me see here. Share screen. There you go. All right, I'm not the best tech savvy person. Yay, all right, we're here. <laughs> all right, guys, so yeah, just like Chef AJ mentioned, I'm just gonna be talking about how important it is to just support our body's natural ability to detoxify on a regular basis. So we're going to be talking about how to do that through lifestyle changes and nutrition. And this is basically based off of the um, my contribution to the bundle, along with my co-contributor, Stacey Heine, where we developed a really fun webinar, basically talking about how to support your body's innate ability to detoxify, as well as do that through like lifestyle changes, but also through nutrition. And Stacey has a wonderful part in it as well. Um, with just creating a whole series of videos on how to create food that helps to support your body's ability to detox. So it's really wonderful. So definitely check it out. So quick about me. Um, so I was a former swimmer and then I went through four years of school uh, to get my doctorate in chiropractic. And then after graduation, I went to work at True North Health Center. And now I have a consulting business here in Southern California working with chronic illness symptoms. So um, all right. So I'm just passionate about uh, spreading awareness around all this because a lot of things that come up for us in terms of symptoms can really be related to our body just not being able to detoxify things that we're coming into contact with and things just naturally start to build up inside us. So um, our bodies do have six different detoxification organs to be able to detox what we come into contact in the outside world. So Sadly, we do live in an increasingly polluted world that does tend to overburden our body's ability to detox these things out. And then what occurs is we just develop more blocked or clogged detox pathways that then result in symptoms, uh, especially essentially from toxin accumulation. And so here's our different detoxification organs. We've got our lungs, our kidneys, we've got our liver, our ability to sweat, our whole GI system, our gut, as well as our lymphatic system. So I'm going to go into each of the ways that you can actually support these on a regular basis. But first, why not jump into a detox regimen first? So it's so easy to want to just jump quickly into some sort of cleanse or supplement regimen or things like that. And while those all do have a time and place, it's really important to develop these lifestyle changes that we can have every single day consistently that support our bodies. And so these organs, they need nutrients to support them. And so that's where increasing nutrient density, reducing our chemical like toxic burden from different products that we're using and things that are found in our water supply and um, in the air pathways, there's, there's chemicals everywhere and not to get stressed about it, but it, you know, it's good to just take steps and slowly reducing our exposure to these um, developing mindfulness techniques so that we're not in such a fight or flight state. And then also movement, movement, all these things are going to help in supporting our body and actually adding all these in together, create this beautiful situation where it will help us to start to detoxify things a lot easier as opposed to just having to jump straight into some detox regimen. So initial signs that your body isn't detoxing, if you're not going to the bathroom regularly, or if you're constipated, or you're more prone to um, just irregular bowel movements, that's a really big sign that your body is not detoxing. Um, if you're having trouble sweating, that's another really big one. If you're not you're, um, urinating frequently, and not hydrating a well, then that's another sign as well, because those are three big pathways that our body eliminates is through our poop, through sweating, and then also through um, peeing it out. So, <laughs> so those are some signs that you can look into. So I love this slide here, how to detox, because I just first and foremost want to say again that all the detox regimens, they really are great. I'm a big, I worked at True North Health Center. Like I love fasting. I think it's absolutely wonderful, but I'm just all about implementing too, like these 
um, important consistent lifestyle regimens that will help our bodies to detox on a regular basis, right? So the reason why in general, most detox regimens don't work long-term is because we're not addressing the root cause of the symptoms, right? We're continuously exposing ourselves to these things that are actually creating these symptoms in the first place. And then what happens is if, if these pathways are still blocked while we try to jump into a detox regimen, we can just get a recirculation of these different symptom um, toxins because the pathways are blocked and not um, efficiently getting rid of them, right? So I always say avoidance, uh, removing what's causing the harm, and then adding in those great lifestyle changes that help to support your detox organs naturally. So We'll start with the gut. We all know how important the gut is. It actually really is, I would say, almost 85% of all of this, right? It's it's central to detoxification and again, removing the harm. So what, what's causing um, our symptoms? That's a really, really big one. But adding in things that are helpful, this is so, so big. So adding in fiber, right? Adding in a variety of fiber. So this actually helps to bind to toxins and chemicals. It helps to feed our good gut microbes, which we know through the American Gut Project that by adding in more diverse species of, sorry, species, more diverse types of different plants, that's actually helping to diversify our gut microbiome and then helping us to create more short chain fatty acids when we're eating these different fibrous foods that are helping to promote anti-inflammatory effects. And then intermittent fasting. So um, I mentioned this only in the sense of just like a 10 to 11 hour fast overnight is really, really great, which most of us naturally do anyways. If you're done eating dinner by six or seven and then you fast until seven the next morning, there's there's a beautiful 12 hour fast right there. Um, and then just uh, less snacking. And that's another big one too, right? Because it's helping to activate something called our migrating motor complex, which basically turns on during periods of fasting um, around three to four hours when you've been fasting. And so that's why spacing your meals out about three to four hours is really great. And this is actually helping to sweep toxins and um, bacteria and fungi, all these things from your small intestine into the large intestine where it should be to get eliminated. And so this only gets turned on during periods of fasting. So just implementing that in between meals is really, really helpful. And we've all heard of the term leaky gut. So um, I just wanted to put this here about how these are the different things that can actually contribute to causing harm. So I've already been mentioning a bit about environmental chemicals, but processed foods, even stress, unnecessary antibiotics, um, alcohol. And then we often think of things that are outside, but also inside of us as well. If we are dealing with any sort of gut overgrowth like SIBO or fungal overgrowth SIFO, those are things to obviously make sure that we address as well and work with somebody on that piece. But again, there's definitely, these things are some of the biggest things that do contribute to creating a bit of a leakier gut, which basically just means that there's a little bit of a break within our, um, the membrane that's basically separating the intestinal wall from our systemic circulation. And then we just absorb more things, which um, can, can create inflammation in the body. So, so other things to support the gut as well. We all know about those probiotic rich foods. I put these two strains here. There's different strains with probiotics, um, with the species and actually through research, we know that certain strains of probiotics can actually bind to chemicals. So we see here, there's one for BPA, one for lead. So just diversifying the types of probiotic foods that you're eating, whether it's through um, a good quality plant-based yogurt, or whether it's through kimchi or sauerkraut, those are all really great ways to support your body and adding in more probiotic rich foods. Um, other ways to support the gut is through exercise. So gut motility, um, that actually helps to promote more gut motility and get things moving more regularly. Um, reducing stress and going into nature actually helps to further um, amplify this defense system called IgA that's at our um, gut lining to help fight off any pathogens that we come into contact with. So these are all great ways, aside from food, great ways to also support your gut too. So our kidneys, we talked about our kidneys as being one of our pathways of elimination. So drinking half your body weight in ounces of water daily, very, very important. Um, eating a good quality plant-based diet has been shown to boost blood flow through our kidneys and helping us to also eliminate toxins, removing excess phosphate. These are different fillers that are found within products, especially a lot of plant-based milks that we know actually really cause a lot of burden to our kidneys. Um, avoiding animal proteins, the, by, the byproducts of those build up and create a big heavy burden on our kidneys. Um, considering supplementation. So uh, when we over supplement um, on things that we don't need, that really creates a big stress on our kidneys too. So being very aware of that. 
Um, and then reducing salt, we know that that is a really big one too. And then I have here removing endotoxins. Endotoxins are basically just toxins that are found that are created within us. Again, if there is any sort of gut pathogen overgrowth occurring, that is actually what is creating what we call endotoxins, just meaning toxins inside us. So foods for kidney support. So these five foods here actually are really beneficial for that. So beets, blueberries, cocoa powder, turmeric, and getting a variety of herbs in. That's always really, really helpful. So skin support. So sweating, another great way of eliminating toxins and supporting our body's ability to detoxify. So sweat contains different things that we now know through research. So BPA, heavy metal, flame retardants, PCBs, um, which are an environmental pollutant that um, take a lot of years to break down, and then even mycotoxins, which is toxins from mold. And so you don't have to, you know, go into some high quality sauna to get a sweat in. The saunas are great and for red or traditional saunas are wonderful. Um, you can do this through exercise, through doing a little bit of a cardio session. If that doesn't feel good to you and, and you don't love cardio, you can take a hot bath and do that a few times a week. Um, 15 to 20 minutes in a hot bath is wonderful for helping to eliminate toxins as well as um, adding in like some nice Epsom salts just to get like a good soak in and be able to help your body and just sweating more. So these are all really great ways to support your skin. So the next detox pathway are, is your lymphatic system. So our lymphatic system is basically this giant network of, um, lymphs that basically is just all over our body. It's surface level. And what they do is it's carrying toxins from your cells to your blood to then get transported to those other detox organs I've just been talking about to then get eliminated from the body, whether it's through your poop, your sweat, or your urine. And so the thing with the lymphatic system is it's not like the other ones that do this active detox mechanism. There's really no pump involved. So the, it's really prone to becoming more stagnant and still, so things can kind of start to build up a little bit there. So, um, and another important piece to it too, is that they are a really, really big part of our immune system because they help to transport white blood cells. So I have here actually just some different symptoms that actually do um, relate to having a bit of a more sluggish lymphatic system. So having like some swelling, like swollen glands, any digestive issues, cold hands and feet, feeling like you are more susceptible to infections, a lot of fatigue, these different things really are symptoms of having a bit of a more sluggish lymphatic system. So ways to support are through movement. So like I mentioned before, there is no detox, I'm um, sorry, there is no pump mechanism. So um, by actually moving, that's really what's helping to promote better lymphatic flow. And so that can look like, I always like to tell people micro breaks, right? So if you have a desk job, make sure you're getting up every hour. Or so even if it's just for a few minutes, like that's perfect, just getting up to move around, or even if it's just to do a few squats, getting the blood flowing, that's so, so important, getting that lymphatic system flowing. Um, hydrotherapy. Actually, this is um, a really great one, especially if you're starting to feel a little bit sick, this is a really great way to support just kind of removing, removing viruses, getting, getting things moving throughout your system. And that can look like doing, um, it's hydrotherapy is basically hot versus cold showers. So you would do like three minutes hot on, and then one minute of very cold and do that a few times through that's hydrotherapy, helping to move that lymph flow, um, dry brushing that basically just looks like a little horse brush and you just gently uh, rub it on your skin upwards towards your heart. Um, on all the different areas of your body. That's really great. They're like $10. You can get one on Amazon. That's really helpful. Um, I have breath work in here because actually there's a lot of lymphatic system that's located within our gut and within our chest and everything. And so by doing that deep breath work, that's actually really helping to promote really, really good um, lymph flow as well. And then reducing tight clothing because the, they're very superficial, a lot of these um, lymphatic channels. So if you're always wearing tight, tight, tight clothing, that's actually promoting more of that stagnant lymphatic system. So reducing tight clothing is always really helpful. All right, next we have lung support. So we breathe around 11,000 liters of air a day. It's a lot, a lot of air. And this is a, an area I think that a lot of us don't even think about that we need to make sure that we're supporting in terms of um, what we're intaking in, right? And so um, obviously before we open our windows, make sure you check the air quality, everything's good to go outside, but that's a really great way to just open up what might be um, just kind of um, harboring within the home, right? So 
Um, I have a statistic on another slide here, but the EPA, the Environmental Protective Agency, estimates that the indoor air quality is three to five more toxic than outdoor air quality. And it's basically just because of modern building construction. Um, it's more, we're providing more efficiency in terms of air, but then things tend to get trapped more inside. So opening windows up a little bit, getting a good quality air purifier, very, very great and just supporting good quality air flow. Um, and then start removing indoor contaminants. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but those are a few really great ways to help support just your indoor air. Um, well, like I mentioned, so indoor air is more toxic than outdoor air. Um, and it's due to different things like household cleaning products, air fresheners, candles, things like that, that are contributing to releasing these chemicals in the air. And so you can help to improve this by swapping out some of those conventional cleaning products, opening windows, having a good quality air purifier. And then there's some indoor air, um, indoor plants. It was a NASA study that I'm going to share with you on the next slide that actually does um, help to purify the air as well. And if you're looking for making swaps in some products that you have or not sure if any of the products that you're using might be um, contributing to creating a little bit more of a toxic airflow indoors, you can actually double check this with a, um, there's an app that came out about last year or two years ago called Clear Ya, um, C-L-E-A-R-Y-A. That's a really great one to cross check all different types of products. Actually, I love that one. I tell all my clients about that. So definitely check that out just to make sure. And so, like I mentioned, through the NASA study, uh, these different indoor plants have been shown to really help in purifying the air. I've got a lot of the snake plants around here, um, but lady palms and peace lilies are also really, really great with that as well. And then last but not least, I'm saving the big one for last because um, in the webinar that my good friend Stacy Heine and I created together for this bundle, we actually really do kind of hone in more on the liver detoxification piece because this is really where any chemical that you do come into contact with first really does go through the liver to help to get basically, um, it goes through different phases to get converted into the waste that will then get excreted through like your stool or through your kidneys. So um, yeah, so that's basically what the liver phases look like. There's different um, phases to it. And I go into detail on those within the webinar. And so to generally support your liver, again, each phase actually requires different nutrients and that's the big piece to it. So um, it's really, really cool and really interesting when we dive into this with our webinar that's in the bundle, but um, we talk about each of the different nutrients that do help to support those phases. And sometimes if there is any nutrient deficiencies, like for example, for that very first phase when the toxins do come in and need to get converted within the liver. If you have an iron deficiency, that's something that needs to be addressed to help support that piece. So um, making sure you're looking into that piece, any nutrient deficiencies, those need to be corrected for sure. So foods for liver support. So we've got a whole variety of them that we talk about in our bundle contribution piece, but just some ones here that are really, really important is your B vitamins. Very, very important. You get those through leafy greens and grains, um, getting in a variety of different amino acids, which you do already, if you're already getting in a variety of plant-based sources, but I have here legumes and soy are some good, really, really good quality sources of amino acids that you can get, um, and protein. Uh, vitamin C. So kiwis, bell peppers are really, really great sources of that. Magnesium. So like good quality, um, high quality, like dark chocolate, like a cacao powder, really great pumpkin seeds, vitamin E. And then the other piece to it too, with liver support, again, it's, it's not always just nutrients and foods, but it's, what are you doing outside of that too? Like lifestyle wise, right? So, um, are we getting in good quality exercise, getting things moving? How is our sleep? How's our stress? I always say this piece too, in regards to the stress is that if your body is in that fight or flight state, the last thing it wants to do is naturally start to get rid of whatever the heck you're coming into contact with. And so finding five to 10 minutes a day minimum of just doing some breath work or just, just sitting and just doing like some alternate nostril breathing, acupressure points, anything that just helps to get your body into that relaxed state, right? Because that will get you into more of a parasympathetic state versus a sympathetic state and help to naturally detox your system. That's what your body will want to do. So decreasing stress, mindful eating, that's a big one, right? And that helps us support our gallbladder. And so I'm going to talk about how the gallbladder is important piece to the liver detoxification uh, part in a second. And then actually reducing caffeine intake as well, because that again, is just stimulating our body to want to be sympathetic and all that stuff. So I'm um, reducing caffeine intake, very important also for liver support. 
So the reason I um, have the gall, this is part of the gallbladder. So supporting your bile production. So bile is produced in the liver, but is excreted in the gallbladder. So when we are eating food, um, our bodies are, is, is a, our gallbladder is actually starting to excrete bile into the small intestine where a lot of things start to get absorbed. Its job is to the bile specifically helps to um, one out, it helps to keep pathogens at bay. It's a really big support mechanism. So that's very important to keep, to make sure that's functioning right. Um, but also it's helping to digest fats and absorb them and absorb nutrients. Um, so ways we can support our gallbladder in this bile getting excreted is eating slowly. I always say digestion starts with the brain by actually looking at our food, it registering back to our body that we're about to start eating. Um, actually doing fasting has been shown to support bile production as well, whether you do intermittent fasting or you do a yearly block fast, that's always really helpful too. Um, sulforaphane, which is found in very, very high concentrations, especially in broccoli sprouts, very helpful in supporting your bile flow. Um, bitters. So eating things like ginger, arugula, saffron, those are all really great to, um, also incorporate, um, having better bile flow. And I always tell people that are struggling with a little bit of a sluggish gallbladder, just eat a little bit of kale or a little bit of arugula right before your meal that will actually help to really stimulate bile flow. Um, and again, I, I keep saying this, but checking for nutrient deficiency is very important, very, very important, um, in terms of all that. And then this is the last slide here, but um, glutathione is actually our body's master antioxidant. It's a fun name. And it's really, really important in helping supporting our liver to detoxify as well. Um, and what's great about glutathione, our body actually makes its own, but it gets upregulated, meaning like more of it will help to get made by eating things like cruciferous vegetables and herbs and actually um, focusing on like exercise, exercise, any form of exercise will help to support that glutathione production. And so th this is a very, very key nutrient in helping our bodies actually detox as well. So that's why I always have this as its own slide. Um, and then there's actual sources of it as well. Um, okra, walnuts, and avocados actually do help um, in increasing glutathione as well, because they naturally contain it. So thank you guys for listening. Um, I hope that you guys are all enjoying bundle week because this has been really fun being a part of it. Always grateful to chef AJ for putting this on and having us all here. If you want to find me for more information, um, Instagram and TikTok, my name is Dr. Steph Peacock. I just started a podcast where I'm bringing on experts in the chronic illness space, specifically related to chronic digestive issues, mold toxicity, and mast cell activation syndrome. It's called Holistic Hub Podcast. So it's on YouTube, Spotify, all the things. And then for consulting and other information too, for my shop as well, for non-toxic products at stephaniepeacock.com. You can find me there too. Oh, thank you, Dr. Peacock. <laughs> You know, I, you. I wanted to ask you, you know, you talked about an air purifier. Is there one you recommend or do you do you need them like in every because, you know, if somebody has a big house with high ceilings, do they really do you need to get one for every room or what's the best way to go about this? Yeah. Yeah. So my, honestly, my favorite one, and it's really one of the most affordable ones is called air doctor. And I have the links for it in my website too, at stephaniepeacock.com. Um, I is actually a discount link for like almost half off of their air purifiers, but what's great is they're an ultra HEPA filtration. So they're capturing all things like mold spores and, um, pet dander and all this kind of stuff too. And they also have carbon filtration, which is important. You want both of those in an air purifier. And, um, yeah, they, depending on the model will cover more like square footage. So I have one here. It's like the middle model. It's the air doctor 3000. And that covers like, oh my gosh, I think it's up to like 1500 square foot. So it's really fabulous for that. And then we'll have like a little one for like our bedroom or something just cause we sleep there, but yeah. So that's usually, they have all different kinds of models. Yeah. And how often do you have to change the filters or do you just um, clean the filters? Yes. Yeah, so you change the filter. So there's two filters in there. So the carbon filter, you change um, twice a year. And then the, the HEPA filter is once a year. So it's not super often, which is nice. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. I notice you, you know, you, you practice what you preach. You talk about the benefits of plants and you have quite a few. I know. Yes. I eat them and then I love them everywhere. So <laughs> money. Yeah. other than your wonderful products in the bundle, what else caught your eye? Oh my gosh. You know, I have to say, I, I think I, I'm, I naturally have such a sweet tooth. So I think I was really drawn to the, the nice cream one where the scoops, I can't remember the name of it, but it's, um, it's wholesome the scoops, I think wholesome scoops. Oh my God. I'm like, I just, 
I love, I gawk over that kind of stuff. Cause I'm like, Oh, it's just, I live on of nice cream. I think it's the best thing ever. <laughs> and, and it's so, I mean, people just, they're blown away when you make it for them, even kids. It's like, it's just a banana, but it, it's amazing. <laughs> I know. Well, it's amazing how many chemicals are in ice cream. You know, it's not just the animal products, the dairy, and also, also sometimes certain flavors of ice cream have eggs, but it, it's so chemicalized. I know. Yeah. Just the production process and like whatever it's coming into. And then, yeah, even just the ingredients, it's like, and when you're making nice cream from bananas, like, honestly, it tastes better than ice cream. It's just so naturally sweet and you just feel, you actually feel like full after and good. So it's just, you can't beat it, but yeah. Nice. Yeah. Guys yeah. have any questions for Dr. Peacock. Mm -hmm. or about detox? Do you work with people one-on-one -on -one or do you work with them in groups? Yes. Yeah. Great question. So I do, I work with people one-on-one. -on -one. I am developing actually a group program toward hopefully we'll launch at the end of this year. But, um, and that was kind of where the podcast was born out of was just uh, wanting to reach more people basically with information on all this stuff. <laughs> but, but right now it's just one-on-one -on -one consulting. Yeah. And then, um, but yeah, so they can go on my website and, uh, just email me <laughs> or sign up on the list to work with me too. Thanks. And here's a question from Lori. I've had my gallbladder removed. So how does that affect my body and my digestion? That's such a good question. I get to ask that all the time. So um, the beautiful part about all that is that your liver is still making gallbladder. And, I'm sorry. Oh my gosh. Your liver is still making bile, right? And so it's just getting excreted through a different pathway, basically. Not as much as your gallbladder would be emitting it, but it's still getting excreted. So I still support taking those steps to support your liver, which we talk in depth about in the bundle, uh, in our contribution within the bundle. But again, just getting that variety of different nutrients that help to support the different parts of your liver detox process, which we go into too. And that uh, webinar that Stacey and I created are really, really helpful in creating that bile flow and then helping you have a great digestion process. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Let's see. What do you think the biggest mistake people make when it comes to detox? Honestly, I, this is my biggest, uh, so one I think is going on a very, very intense supplement regimen. Usually when your, your body is really just creating nutrients and lifestyle changes, a big, big piece. But then I think the other piece is just not addressing like where the symptoms may be coming from and trying to just jump into something that would be like a quick fix versus actually addressing the root of the problem. Right. And so that's where a lot of the nutrients and a lot of the lifestyle changes really come into play with that piece, because our detox organs really need all these nutrients. And when we go into these big detox regimens, we're almost devoiding ourselves to these nutrients and not focusing on that part. So by doing the habits that you develop consistently day after day with adding in these different things that I talked about, um, really, really helps so, so much and all that. So I think just, um, yeah, yeah. Not, not addressing the lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. Ronnie says, I'm so excited about the bundle. I bought it today. If you'd like to buy it for Dr. Peacock, support her work. She has a unique link right below in the chat and in the show notes. And Donna says, do you recommend a place to get a micronutrient test? Oh yeah. My favorite, actually my favorite micronutrient panel is actually from Vibrant Wellness. So you can type that into um, the Google or whatever, and then that should pop up. So that's the, my favorite one to order it from. It's very um, thorough. Let's put it that way. <laughs> cool. And then here is a question from... Annie, what do you think about working on the lymph system before a detox? I heard that was important, but I wondered. Yes, absolutely. So if you're going to go into any detox, whether it's fasting or, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever it is, right, juice cleansing or whatever you want to do that are all wonderful for you, um, by working on like your lymphatic system, that's a big, big one for sure. And all the other ones as well. But yeah, absolutely. Because that, that one tends to get missed the most, I'd say, out of all the detox pathways, because we don't think about that. So adding in things like sauna use, um, dry brushing, reducing tight clothing, you know, all these things are going to be really helpful in promoting that lymph flow. So yeah, definitely. Thanks. We have time for one more question then, because we have to reset. We have another show at two o'clock today. Mm -hmm. Jojo says, if we have fluid retention in one area, say a foot, what could the possible causes and treatments be? Yeah, absolutely. So fluid retention, again, usually leads me to thinking of a couple of things, but definitely lymphatic flow is absolutely huge because um, usually when there is going to be some sort of like um, water retention and if it, when it's related to the lymphatic system, you usually see it on one side versus the other. So you don't usually see it 
on both sides at the exact same time. So that just tells me that there needs to be more movement involved, that there needs to be more support in the lymphatic system, more um, intake of nutrients to help support your body in that piece. And then obviously making sure to go through any sort of testing, just to rule anything serious out if there was anything. But usually I would say when that piece, when there's like that unilateral swelling, I would look into the lymphatic system and supporting that piece as well. Nice. Well, thanks, Dr. Yeah. Peacock. It's always nice to see you again. I know. Good to see you too. Thanks for having me. Thank you. And thanks for being in the bundle. And thanks all of you for supporting the bundle. Come back in about 28 minutes for Nutmeg Notebooks, Tom and Tammy Kramer. And they're going to be talking about cooking for company. Take care.